Problems are huge. The solutions are microscopic. Bad news clouds the world, refuses passage to the light. Who will prepare the way of our joy? The one who promised to exchange a garland of beauty for the stress of passes. When garbage chokes the sea and threats choke the airwaves, when the rich buy books to learn to divest themselves of things, well, the poor long for just enough to stop worrying. When only those who can pay can be healthy, who will prepare the way of our joy? The one who made the earth and all its contents good. The one who promises to bring all things to fulfillment. When men are full of anger and power, when women are believed are not believed, when those who are neither or both are abused. When children are exploited by governments or by traders, when color is still the measure of personhood, when wealth is still the measure of worth, who will prepare the way of our joy? The one who came in human body with human needs and heavenly desire, a human brain and God's own thoughts, a human heart and an eternity love. Desire of nations, glory of heaven, light of the world, you are our joy, you are our light. We do not know the hour of your coming, so until then, let us be the joy and the light. See us shining and come. Leave your exile behind. God is calling us home. We'll follow the way through the desert. Enter the desert without fear. God's water will quench our thirst. 
who walk the highway of God's people. Travel the highway with joy. God is leading to life in abundance. Who will strengthen weak hands and support feeble knees. Who encourage the fearful and calm the anxious. Rejoice, be strong. God is with us. Come, let us worship. O oh God, we come today echoing John the Baptist's question to, our, to your beloved child. Are you the one who is to come? Give us eyes to see and ears to hear the answer for ourselves. In the work of justice, Christ, and the practice of mercy, Christ, in good news for the poor, Christ, in the vision of peace, Christ, make us ready with open hearts and joyful spirits to follow in Christ's way. Amen. Heart the herald angels sing, glory to newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Heart the herald angels sing, Glory to the newborn King. Christ the highest and adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time behold Him come, offspring of a virgin's born. Filled in flesh the God and sing, filled in carnage Jesus, or Emmanuel, for the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Advent calls us to wake up and rejoice in the hope that is ours. Day is coming, and with it the promise of new hope in Christ. But we must commit to living in the light, and so we pray. When the heaviness of clinging to stuff we no longer need, and bad habits too comfortable to shed, keeps us half asleep and unable to wake up and follow Jesus, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. When the bitterness of hanging on to unhealthy relationships or jealousies and quarrels, or hurts unforgiven, keeps our community weary and unable to recognize the new thing God is doing in our midst. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. When a history of injustice and violence unaddressed in community lead to societal structures that hinder fullness of life for all, when realities of racism, sexism, homophobia, given form and substance among us. Lord, have mercy. The night is far gone. The day is on the horizon. In Christ, we are forgiven and given strength to face a new day, rejoicing and to participate fully awake in working for the kingdom of God. Let us celebrate this great joy by passing the peace in the community. The peace of God be with you. For the life
of the ministry of our church. Birthday greetings to all those who are celebrating their birthdays today. Do we have birthday celebrants? Happy birthday to you. And also, happy wedding anniversaries to those who are celebrating their wedding anniversaries. May God's protection and blessings be upon you all. Please be reminded of our schedule this December. On December 18 at 6 p.m., you are invited to be with us here in the church to witness the Youth Christmas Carol conducted by Kim Mosot. And on December 24 at 6 p.m. also, we have a joint choir cantata. And on December 25, we have our regular service at 30 and at 10 a.m. Christmas worship through music with our children. So come and join as our church celebrate Christmas this year. The rest of our concerns we will just inform you next time. So at this point in time, let us come for the presence of our God as we pray together this Advent prayer. Let us bow down our heads. This Advent season, O oh Lord, come to the manger of our hearts. Fill us with your presence from the very start. And as we prepare for the holidays and gifts to be given, remind us of the gift you gave when you sent your Son from heaven, the first Christmas gift. It was the greatest gift ever we received. You came as a baby born in a manger, wrapped like the gift we find under our trees, waiting to be opened, to reveal your love to us. Restore to us, O oh God, the wonder that came with Jesus' birth, when he left the riches of heaven and wrapped himself in rocks of earth. Emmanuel, God with us, your presence came that night. And angels announced into the darkness, God brings his light. Do not be afraid, he said to the shepherds in the field. Speak to our hearts today, Lord, and help us to heal. Make us like those shepherd boys to lead in the fall, setting destructions and worries aside to you. We surrender them all. Surround us with your presence, Lord. We long to hear your voice, clear our minds of countless concerns and all the happy moments. Slow us down this Christmas and let us not be in rush and in the midst of parties and planning and rocking. We want to feel your hush. This Christmas, Jesus came to the manger of our hearts, invade our soul like Bethlehem bringing peace and joy to every heart. Please dwell within and around us as we unwrap your presence each day. And keep us close to you, Lord, each in your wonderful name.
of our meditation this morning is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 11, and James, chapter 5, verse 7 and 10. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. Be patient, brothers and sisters until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too, be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters. Soon you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Here is the reading of the scripture. May God's blessings be upon those who are listening to the scripture.
May the joy of Christmas be upon us all. Let us pray. Come, Holy One, and speak to us at this time. The title of our meditation this morning is The Joy of Waiting Patiently in the Midst of the Spirit. I remember that it was at the peak of excitement on December 16, 2011, when Typhoon Sendong hit Iligan and Kagendo or City. Thousands of people died and some are missing. During the tragedy, more than 1,000 individuals from nearby Barangay were sheltered in the Cagayan de Oro UCCB Church for almost two weeks. One day, when I went out from the room where we sort and pack goods for the evacuees, I saw a long line of people in the ground of the church. Men, women, Older people, children, and young people. Nakakao na pagka sila? O wala pa? How about the children? Though they have milk or food to take at this time, I remember about waiting. About their waiting. I thought about what they were expecting. I thought about their feelings. Then, it all seems well. After a few years, Marawisins came. After Marawisins, COVID-19 pandemic came. Which the whole world were caught unaware and unaware. We don't know what to do until one day we just heard about lockdown. Stay at home, especially children and the seniors. No one is allowed to go outside your home. We have to stay put and wait patiently for the ayuda from the government, from friends and from church. It was a very stressful situation. But, you know, we have to wait patiently and take it all to God in prayer. And so, if we talk about happiness or joy this morning, it is difficult to imagine as to how that looks. Life. Perhaps a glimpse of genuine joy in our generation would bring a positive implication on how we perceive all the things that have been happening around us. Genuine joy or happiness would require great effort to be manifested in our society today. When we see the green faces of pain and grief, and also the fear of recovering from the unthinkable aftermath brought by the pandemic. The various forms of violence caused by domestic or external factors has added to that dilemma of seeking the good in everything. Reported brutal deaths of innocent civilians, natural disasters and man-made calamities that brought devastation to different places war inside and outside our own country. It seems that the world is a miserable place to live in. So the text we found in James reminds us that in our suffering we need to have patience. Just like how farmers are waiting for the right time, for the harvest. But what is patience when your stomach is empty and growing? What is Advent when your loved one is suffering from, from serious illness 
and what is waiting when your dignity has been leveled and your weary soul must resign to painful patience or starvation. Sheila Klasin Bibi reminds us that James readers were probably the poor who were suffering because of social economic disparities and oppression by the rich. He calls for patient endurance several times in his steps. A variation of patience appears four times in four verses. Clearly, it is his focus for the section of the chapter that centers the downtrodden. In this text, James calls the oppressed to embrace patience and endurance. And this patience that James writes about presumes that the sufferer knows no day nor are for in which their relief will come. In this text, James urges his readers to an active patience and calls them to faithful living while they wait. Thinking about active patience, I am attempting to exercise in my life around some desires that have not yet been met. I am actively waiting for something. I pray for to come to fruition. And while I'm waiting, I'm working. And while I'm waiting, I'm living. While I'm waiting, I am dreaming despite the unmet desires. None of those desires, however, are basic life needs. Food, shelter, water, clothing. Yet the waiting still makes me weary. I am weary on a full stomach. I am weary and clothed. I am weary and sheltered. But what do we say to the weary who do not have their basic needs met? How do we preach patience, even active patience, to those who are victims of different calamities? Those who are suffering from different serious illnesses but lack resources. Where is this hope? in the Advent season for the least of these who wait in line for SSS to cater to their problems. Isaiah 35 verse 1 says, The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad, the desert shall rejoice and blossom like the wind. Perhaps James needs to be paired with some of the other texts to illuminate what patience looks like in the power of the shadow of death. And perhaps we must activate our memory. There is a collective memory that we as followers of Jesus and who creators with God call upon in times where patience seem lost and hope seems impossible. Also, the practice of remembering is a practice of hope. The writer of James wasn't the first to try to bring hope to a dry place. Isaiah reminds us that even the desert rejoices. Even the dry land cultivates gladness. The psalmist reminds us that even in the midst of the chaos and calamity, we are in relationship with God who can execute justice for the oppressed and who gives food to the happy, and who sets the prisoners free. That is in Psalms 146, verse 5 to 7. Is this not what this faith journey is all about? You know, even Mary, mother of Jesus, in her hour of uncertainty, in the midst of an unplanned pregnancy, during a time when her reproductive rights were non-existent, you know, he, she sees to God in your dry place, saying, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For God has looked with favor 
or in the lowliness of God's servant. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. Luke 1, 46. Well, you know, I have to believe that somehow she remembered her ancestors talking about the God who would make the way in the wilderness and the river in the glory of the That was Mary's invitation. It is so easy to find ourselves living in hopelessness. Even spiritual leaders who attend to the many crises of our communities can slip into hopelessness. The unmet basic needs seem to be piling up in great numbers. These days, it can feel like nothing we're doing or fighting for is making a dent in growing economic disparity. But, happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord, their God. The practice of remembering, of stringing the wondrous acts of God together, is a practice of patience, of perseverance. It is a practice needed now more than ever. We remember not just to live in nostalgia and recall on the good old days. We remember God and God's presence as we fight to put the pieces of our lives back together again. It requires perseverance and the willingness to wait for, the, for that joy to arrive. We are also reminded that in the sufferings we are currently facing, all of this will soon to be replaced with joy or great gladness in our anticipation of Jesus. The joy of happiness we always embody as Filipinos will also translate as our way of uplifting our spirits whenever we encounter countless hardships. Let us all remember that regardless of the struggles and predicaments we are currently facing, there is always joy within us. The person who lives with the Holy Spirit is a happy person, and the happy person has a reason for thanking God. We remember that a man named Jesus fed people before he preached to them. His ministry was often a feeding ministry to present any verbal message he was trying to convey. In this season of feasting, maybe our patience looks less like waiting for the harvest in the world, where the harvest may not come at all, and more like activating our memory of God of abundance stretches what we already have to get what we need so that all God's children can feast at the table. Lastly, during this Advent season, in our hopeful anticipation of the promised Messiah, we are reminded that Christian life is a happy and grateful life. Jesus spoke his people who have joy. As followers of Jesus, we should also have that joy in our hearts. John, the Gospel of John, verse 15, 11 says, I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that the joy may be in you. Joy does not mean that as followers of Christ, we will no longer feel the anxiety or sadness, but it means behind this anxiety and sadness of life, there will always be joy in Christ. So
So, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, on this Advent season, maybe somebody you don't even know is counting on you to practice this patient remembrance. To recall that even the dry places rejoice and make glad the city of a God who gives the happy good things. That even in times of loneliness and hardship, we can still rejoice because Jesus Christ, the Messiah, promised to be with us always. May it happen in our time. The day of rejoicing is coming, the prophet Isaiah says, that we await it together. Our gifts today in this season of waiting and hope help us to strengthen one another and to offer hope to the world as we look forward to that great day of everlasting joy. Let us gather our gifts together and present them as an offering to God.
With these gifts, dear God, accept the praise and thanksgiving of our hearts. We rejoice in your goodness and love. Let these gifts point to your presence in the world and further your hope for the world through Jesus, Emmanuel. God with us. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. 